welcome to our very first YouTube video. So I am Sophie, this is Chiri who's been, he's been supervising me today, he's done a very good job. Um, so today I wanted to start off our YouTubing with a Pax hack. So this is our guest room, um, we've got a carpet coming in a couple of weeks time so I wanted to get this in so that the carpet can go up to it and it all look built in and lovely. This is a 500 IKEA Pax wardrobe and we've got another 100 to go in here as well so they'll go beside each other and instead of just putting them in there I wanted it to look really built in and seamless, the skirting in front of it, build around the edges so it looks like a proper expensive bespoke unit but it will cost less than 500 pounds, not 100 pounds, that would be insanely cheap, less than 500 pounds. So to do that I have already built these. This is also the 35 centimeter deep one because if we got the 57, 58 deeper one, um, it would have clashed with the window and would have looked really stupid. So um, I figured a smaller depth unit was better than no storage at all. So we've already built that. We're trying to keep the skirting on because I don't really want to be dealing with taking it off again. <laughs> I don't know why we put it on in the first place, but we are here. So we're going to be working around that. So I already know the what my skirt is going to be. It's just going to match the rest of the room. So how I want it to be built. This is, I haven't um, drilled, screwed this down yet, so it's not very stable. But this is just me testing out heights and stuff. So I think what I'm going to do when the door is put on here it will should be flush with the bottom of this line here so from the bottom of there to the bottom of here is seven centimeters and my skirt here is 15 centimeters so this is why we have to write um this is why we have to raise the bottom of it because if this was on the floor it would look like that and then you're not going to be able to put your door on there unless you cut it down so i have made a platform here it is 10 centimeters 10 10.2 something like that so that rises everything up so that when my skirting goes in front of it um the door will be here so it just gives it a more built-in look and then to hide this strip here you could i could have made the exact size platform so that the door would fit directly on my skirt in but i'm gonna go a little bit better than that and make it like a tiny bit more built in so this bit here we don't want to really be showing so i'm gonna put a piece of timber that is the same width as the door so that the door will sit on this piece of timber and then the skirts will go in front of it. Or just, I'm hoping it will look seamless. So let's like use this as a mimic piece of wood because I don't have that yet. So a piece of wood would go here, the door will fit on top of that and then the skirting will go in front like this. So, and then this piece of wood will go the whole way around the outside to make it look built in and it will be flush with the doors. So that's the plan. I bought it forward slightly because um, our alcoves are ever so smaller than the width of this wardrobe and I thought that if I put it flat against the wall there's going to be like millimetres gap and it's not going to be flush and it's going to be so close but look weird. So I bought it all out so that it looks like a purposeful step out rather than looking like we tried to match it and it doesn't quite work. So I'm hoping that it all works out. So yeah, now I've calculated what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get Lawrence back in to help me shift this and drill the frame down. Okay, so how far have you got so far? So we've made the base, we 
made it out of scrap wood, that's why it's a little bit like it ends here. We didn't have enough to go the whole way across, but I think this is going to be enough to hold the wardrobes. It can hold me, so it can hold the wardrobes. <laughs> So now the wardrobe is fully built and we have made the base. I have gone to B&Q and got some various pieces of strip wood, just the, the best ones I could find. Um, they are going to go in here and over this side and a bit around the front just to cover everything up. And I've also got a bit of 9mm MDF just in case. I wanted to kind of make it look prettier, but I'm kind of winging it at this stage. So that's why I've just got random pieces of wood. So the first bit I want to put on is this bottom bar here. So I wanted to hide a lot of this stuff here. It doesn't look very built in. It's very Ikea. So I've got this piece of timber, which is, I believe it's two mil, no, two centimeters thick which is a very similar size to the door thickness. So hopefully once this is up, the doors will sit flush with this piece of timber. And I have scribed a little bit to go on top of the skirt. And so this is gonna be hard to do in one handed, but this is gonna go like that. And then I will fill the gap and then the doors will sit on top of that piece of timber. So it just makes it a little bit more built in. So that's what I'm gonna glue on first. I thought while I'm sat here holding this bit of skirt and on waiting for the glue to dry, I'll show you what I've done. So this is the baton that I put on and I've carried that around in the corner and bat then bat on. Did you get it? You said bat on. Yeah, I put the bat on on. Yeah. Bat on. Right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so then I put the skirt in just directly on top of that and I've just scribed the edges um, not very well and then there's a bit around the corner that I've joined in. So this bit is now looking all built in and I will f I'll fill in this hole and will look lovely and smooth. So the next up is around the sides. So now I have primed, caught, filled all of the bottom. Now I'm going to focus on getting these sides filled in exactly the same method. So I want it to stick out by however much that is. I think it's about two centimetres the whole way around. Um, and then I'm going to put some MDF over the top to cover these holes. Watch this face. <laughs> Five ten minutes to dry before I stick it on the wall. So now 
I can glue this on. So then this piece of timber will be glued to the wall. It should go on like that. And I just use my nails. I find it more than adequate for a project like this. There's not going to be anyone pulling it or any weight on it. So I just use my nails. So now I've cut my second piece, which is going to go in here, like that, but the picture rail is in the way, so I have a way of getting around that really easily. So I have an off cut of my picture rail, so I know that um, when it's up against there, I need to kind of cut out that profile there. So what I will do is stick the flat edge on here at the point where it's going to be, draw around there and then I'll cut it out with a hacksaw and I'll show you how I do that. I'm going out so I'm just going five centimeters the whole way across and then to cover the little gap that will be behind this piece I went to B&Q and just found a piece of timber that fitted that gap so what I've done is the same thing so I've made my strip put the piece of timber that matches the gap on the strip on the wall so hopefully when that goes on there we'll have no gaps the whole way around so that goes straight up to there, and you can't see, but the piece of timber covers the gap that is here. So that's what I'm doing. So now we're looking really good. So we're covered either side. I have filled in the joins here, and I will sand that back down. This side is the same. Again, I filled all down here where the join is and I'll sand that back down so you won't be able to notice once it's painted. And from this side, whoops. And from this side, you can see the timber. And again, once painted and corked, obviously cork that hole, it will all look like one. So now we've just got to do the, the top which I'm going to do another day. So now I am um, putting, getting ready to put my doors on. So I've bought these doors from Ikea, three, I think they're called Grimo doors, but I've put them up a size and um, it's catching the bottom of the wardrobe. Even when I move the hinges up to the highest position, it's still catching. So I've had to trim down every door. This is about 0.8 centimeters. So it's worth bearing in mind, if you put the bat on where I have in my wardrobe, you might have to slice off the bottom of the doors like this or you can put the bat on lower than I have by 0.8 centimeters and you should be all right so to do this I've got myself an electric planer workbench a sander all the protective equipment and I'm just going to slice this off and then put the door on now you can see we're looking very different in here already we have the carpet in I've already hung these two doors I haven't got any handles or they've not been painted yet but that's how they should be so there's like uniform gaps the whole way around this is level here it's just because the door 
for some reason it's slightly closer there but everything is level and fine so now we're going to try this last door So here are all of the doors on, We're all lined up, looking good. The inside is all how I wanted it to be. I've already started putting stuff in here. Top tip though, you will end up with lots of holes here. You can buy packets of whatever this is and these little white things go in all of these holes to make it a little bit more not an ikea packs but we are looking really really good so the next thing is i'm going to take all the doors off again and i'm going to prime them paint them the same color as the wall i also need a bit of mdf to go along the top just to finish off like the rim around the outside and then it's handle time so now we are very nearly done the last thing I did was got a board of 18mm MDF and I've cut it to be exactly the size of the top plus a little bit of overhang here. I've done two centimetres so that it kind of looks a bit like a shelf. So I'm hoping to make it usable space. So let's see how my measurements actually are. That's the one. Looking a lot better out that side. <sighs> it is the day where the doors are finally going back on my wardrobe. So you can see I've put the top on, I corked everything, I painted everything. So the last thing is to just put these back on. Which is nice. Well then we'll also need handles actually. I do lie. We will need handles. So here is the final piece of the puzzle. It is adding the handles. I managed to get these off of Etsy. I think they were like, um, I want to say that like between five and 10 pounds per handle. And they're really good quality. And this is a great way of putting it on. So use the masking tape to line up where you actually want to draw your handles. And I just wanted to thank anyone who has made it through the whole of this video. It is the longest video we've ever done to date. Um, and I hope that this has been really helpful and make sure to message us if you ever do try out a PAX hack um, and show us all of your pictures and videos. We'd love to see them.